This weather is about to make a complete transition as we have a lot of warmer air highlighted into the middle part of the country waiting for a trough out west that will run into that warm sector setting the stage for multiple days of severe storms into the middle part of the country as well as into the upper midwest then we have a cold front that will be coming in on the back side and you're really going to feel the cooler air by the time we head into next weekend so let's take a look at the big picture this morning we are concerned about some severe storms that are highlighted across the northeast today we do have a warm front that's lifting north but a cold front that will come in later on tonight that will set the stage for a renewed threat for some severe storms into the mid-atlantic region as well as into portions of ohio then you can see the warm sector across the middle part of the country a lot of warmer air with those southwest winds but the more significant feature is this trough that's really building out west. That's setting the stage for more rain and high winds across California. But that's the system that will be moving across later on tomorrow night. And the dry line will get activated set the stage for numerous severe thunderstorms. So here's the setup this morning on the satellite picture. We do have a morning complex that is moving in. These aren't severe. We are seeing some showers and thunderstorms across upstate New York, getting into Pennsylvania. There's the main system highlighted out west. That's bringing some heavier rains into Northern California that will eventually swing down into Central California. But for today, our main concern is going to be those storms into the Northeast because by the time we head into tonight, there is going to be a cold front sagging south, and that could be a damaging wind threat highlighted across Ohio, especially as you head towards into the Columbus region. But those areas into the Pittsburgh region do have that elevated risk or an enhanced risk for all three modes. So I think it initially starts as all hazards, but then I think it changes into more of a damaging wind threat as we do have a squall line that will likely come through draped across the boundary of central Ohio, central, uh, central PA as you head up into portions of uh, upstate New York. And you can see on the latest uh, radar depiction, by the time we get into about eight o'clock, so I think initially we're gonna start out with some isolated supercells that could be elongated around this boundary you can see these these little, little little renegades, if you will, popping up. So it's a short window. It's a it's a very kind of narrow band, if you will. But those underneath that will be fairly intense. So they could be some larger hail with it. We do have that changing of wind direction at heights. So we do have that tornado potential, especially around the the, the Pittsburgh region. They do have an elevated risk. So definitely be on high alert as that system will be moving through. I think they have a short window for all hazards, but then it'll change into more of a damaging wind threat and see more of that 60, possibly 65 mile per hour winds as this will move through. I think the main time frame we got to be concerned about these storms beginning about seven o'clock and going through about midnight time frame as they come in from the north into the south up there into the northeast. So back behind it on Monday, we are actually a fairly nice day for a really a good part of the country waiting for storm activation right along that dry line. You can see the low pressure center setting up shop across uh, northern portions of Colorado there down to a 995 millibar. And this looks to be a classic dry line setup as we typically see for, for uh, you know severe storm season. Yeah, look at the look at the sharp gradient and uh, and the, the dew points there, folks. You've got widespread 60s highlighted across Texas into Oklahoma as well as into Kansas, all the way up into portions of Nebraska. But there's a separation with that dry line, and I do think storms fire later on into Monday night. Uh, this looks to be an overnight threat. I don't think things even get going till like 10 o'clock on Monday night. But right now, the Storm Prediction Center has been pretty consistent on this risk with that elevated enhanced risk, mainly highlighted across western portions of Oklahoma, far northwest portions of Texas, and then swinging up into Kansas as well as into Nebraska. And then you get further south into uh, Texas, you still have some dry line initiation. So I think they're going to be more intense as they form along the dry line. But as they move eastward, they will definitely weaken. And of course, as they move 
into portions of the Dallas Fort Worth area in the overnight, they're going to run to a strong capping inversion and they will weaken substantially, even making it before the Metroplex. But the main concern is going to be into far northwestern portions of Texas. You're talking the Childress area. You're talking the, uh, the Wichita Falls region and those areas into western Oklahoma, Woodward into Alva, those areas into Oklahoma, into central uh, Kansas there, as well as into Nebraska as we get into an overnight threat. So if you take a look at the latest update, this is your SREF model. This is kind of a conglomerate of the numerical, the, the short range guidance, kind of hinting at some of those elevated risk for tornadoes, because these winds are going to be changing at height. So we got to be concerned about tornadoes in the overnight hours. This is going to be a nocturnal threat, folks. So especially for those areas into western Oklahoma, far northwest portions of Texas, but getting into Kansas, central Kansas, as well as into Nebraska, into the overnight time frame. And then going into Tuesday, that risk just continues to shift as that low pressure center will continue to deepen up there into Nebraska. And those those storms into Iowa could be more more intense even into from from Monday, because I think by the time this system hits this air mass, it's going to be in peak heating of the afternoon, likely into the afternoon four o'clock time frame. So these could be even more significant than what they could experience on Monday, as those systems will be fishtailing further south into Missouri, back into Arkansas, and the tail end of it will be into northeastern portions of Texas. So right now, I do agree with this. This does have an elevated risk for enhanced storms highlighted across right, right where that triple point is, right where that low pressure center continues to deepen on the right side of that. That's where the, the greatest lift mechanisms and the change in direction of heights of winds. And we gotta be concerned about all three modes of severe storms. If anything, I think this even continues to push a little bit further north that actually includes Minnesota and port, a good a further north into Wisconsin. But nonetheless, this is a, this is a widespread risk as this moves across this boundary, and then it, it goes into Missouri, back into the Arkansas region, into northeastern portions of Texas. Again, these like to be more of a daytime threat rather than a nighttime threat they're gonna get into Monday. So definitely more concerned about these features as we head into Tuesday, especially with some of those latest significant tornado parameters are coming out with some of these short range guidances, uh, you know, numerical models that we have to work with. Yeah, hinting that right there, right there into that Iowa region, into northern, northern portions of Illinois, as well as in the northern portions of Missouri. That is the most favorite area to see the most intense supercells. Those could include some larger hail, possibly that two inch of hail variety or greater. And then an isolated a tornado or two is definitely not out of the question as we head into Tuesday afternoon. So definitely we'll likely see tornado watches in place at that time. And then especially further south as you head into Missouri, back into southeastern portions of Oklahoma, getting into Arkansas and those extreme portions of Northeast Texas. But I think as we get into the midnight time frame, I think that's when Chicago has got to be more smoke, more concerned. It turns into more of a, a nocturnal threat for them as we get into the Chicago region about midnight on on Tuesday night and heading into Wednesday morning, you can see where the low pressure is highlighted across Iowa and to the north of there, that's just all heavy rain into the Dakotas, much of Minnesota here and the further north you go into Wisconsin, I think it's just all rain, but I do feel these areas into central and southern Wisconsin have to be on alert for those severe storms as that continues to lift a little bit further north and that will continue to shift uh, you know, eastbound as we head deeper into the day on Wednesday. So as we head into Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday night, I think the features now highlighted over Indiana into Kentucky, back into Ohio again. I think this has a renewed threat for severe storms as we head into Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday night, as the low pressure center will continue to lift further northeast. Notice there's snow, some building into Canada, yeah, that's that cold front, guys. And this is a fairly decent sized cold front for late April standards. You're going to feel this as it's going to be snowing <laughs> on the backside coming in into Montana, 
into portions of Wyoming. And you can see the cooler anomalies by the time we head into next weekend. This is by Saturday morning. That colder air drops in, drops down from Canada, goes into the uh, uh, you know portions of the northern U.S. and it continues to drop down further south as we get deeper into the day on Saturday, but especially as we head into Sunday. And that will bring a renewed threat, likely not severe. This is just garden variety showers and thunderstorms along the cold front. But you can actually see where the high pressure builds in from Canada down to a 1034. Uh, uh, high pressure there that's insinuating that's got some definitely some chill chillier air back behind it as those colder temperatures will continue to plunge southbound and i could say almost cooler conditions if you will but nonetheless it is going to bring a swath of rain along with it into uh, kansas back into you know, you know, oklahoma here back into portions northern portions of texas as well as into southeastern missouri and getting back into Kentucky, into West Virginia, as well as into Pennsylvania again. And that system continues to push further south as we head into Sunday morning now. This would be next Sunday morning as the cool front actually makes it pretty far south for this time of year. It's going to overrun the conditions and provide more lift down there into Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama you know, back into those portions of Kentucky again into West Virginia. But nonetheless, you're going to feel it right now. The Climate Prediction Center has highlighted that, you know, hazardous temperatures and even a moderate risk for cooler conditions, you know, comparable to this time of year, mainly highlighted over Missouri into Illinois into Indiana. So this is we're not going to be talking about severe storms because uh, severe storms don't like colder air. So that's the good thing about this. Once this cold front comes through on Wednesday, there's likely not going to be any severe storms for at least a week, possibly 10 days. So that's something to be said for the month of April. So we're going to be enjoying a little bit of a respite. I do feel it comes back at the end of April. But right now, after this Wednesday time frame, we are going to be experiencing some cooler conditions for sure. As much of the country is now cooler now, but that's going to be warmer than average out west. Those are going to see those warmer anomalies come in. So it's going to come can have a complete flip, complete transition in temperatures as the cooler anomalies will come in across the central and eastern two thirds of the US as we head into next weekend. And I think that actually just continues for, you know, a decent amount of time for at least more than a couple of days as those cooler anomalies do stick around for the central and eastern two thirds as the warmer air tries to push in from the northwest. But overall, you're going to see a complete difference of what you've experienced of late because right now you're definitely warmer than average across the central U.S. and cooler out west. That's going to completely flip as we head into next weekend. So guys, I appreciate you guys watching. If you like this video, definitely hit the subscribe button and catch me next update. Fire protect you for and after the storm.